proceedings of Woman House any second now. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Megan. Um, so it's an absolute honor to be here today. Um, I'm, I've never been to a conference like this, and it's uh, blown my mind, essentially. <laughs> um, so uh, with that being said, I want to start by respectfully... Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> um, so I want to uh, start by respectfully acknowledging uh, that the land where we gather on is the un unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Nation, uh, who are the traditional keepers of Hornby Island, whose relationship continues to this day. Um, so I also want to acknowledge that I had the honor, privilege, um, of living, learning, and growing up on the traditional unceded territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy in Alberta, which is comprised of the Kainai, Pekani, and Siksik of First Nations. Um, if I had not had the opportunity that was granted to me to be and live on the, and learn on this land, I most likely wouldn't be where I am today. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. So yeah, so jump in, to jump into it. So um, the erosion of women's rights is an ongoing battle for women worldwide. In the United States, women are currently facing the loss of abortion access as the nationwide mandate for legalized abortion laws was overturned, which allows individual states to restrict and potentially ban um, abortion. So women's right to choose and practice bodily autonomy is under threat currently. Um, and in my presentation, The Radical uh, Feminist Happenings of Women House, I will be discussing the role art played in confronting the issues of second wave uh, feminism in the early 1970s to establish that artists are obligated to address uh, the major critical um, crises of their times. So to do so, I'll be drawing upon uh, feminist performances produced at Women House, which directly address the oppression of women and exemplify the consciousness raising effort of the women's movement at the time. So second wave feminism uh, sought to outlaw uh, marital rape, whereas raise awareness about domestic violence, and worked on getting women the right to hold credit cards under their own name and take out mortgages independently. Um, however, the main goal was to fight against the systemic sexism that had been ingrained in the social, cultural, economic, and political underpinnings of North America. The women of the 1960s and 70s demanded that each aspect of women's rights be explored, um, from sexuality to reproductive rights, uh, to domestic labor and official legal inequalities. Artists started to deconstruct the patriarchal environment of the time by radically abandoning traditional representational canons. Uh, and one of these artists was Judy Chicago, very prolific, very well-known um, pioneer in feminist education and feminist artist. Um, and so she, at the time, in the early 70s, demanded an all-female space for her art class at Fresno State College in uh, 1970, where she developed a feminist art program. And in 1971, uh, she began her work at the California Institute for the Arts, um, uh, CalArts, uh, where she uh, started work with the understanding that she and Miriam Shapiro would develop and establish a feminist art program. So Chicago and Shapiro uh, directed the creation of Women House, which was a collaborative work environment for an all-female collective of feminist artists to discuss, explore, and express their female experiences in the home. So Women House uh, was an unexpected happening uh, that took place in residential Hollywood for one month in 1972. This collaborative work environment was created um, in six weeks by 21 students in the feminist art program at CalArts. Um, and it established a, a critical frame um, of reference for uh, female experience to be understood and, and justly addressed. Uh, so as uh, Chicago said, it became both an environment that housed the work of women artists, uh, working out, their, out of their own experiences, and the house of female reality into which one entered to experience the real facts of women's lives, feelings, and concerns. Um, so viewers would uh, wind their way through this home, uh, which was 
uh, comprised of seven rooms and three bathrooms and, and a very large kitchen. Um, I just want to point out as well that the middle image that you see here um, is only a detail of, of the kitchen scene, uh, so it was actually rather large. <laughs> um, yeah, so viewers would wind their way through this home um, and uh, be conf uh, home confronted and challenged by the par um, par parodies of societal expectations. So the house functioned as an immersive experience in which the private interactions and occurrences of domestic life were made public. Uh, this radical uh, invitation into the intimacies of female experiences captivated audiences and also aggravated a lot of audiences um, and went on to gain national attention. So it really sparked widespread debate in this uh, feminist art program, which was, um, at least in North America, one of its kind, uh, and the first of its kind, uh, gained national attention and, and uh, really grew from there. Yeah. So, um, and another few couple works. Um, I love this work on the left, uh, Sandy Orgel. Um, there's a quote uh, that she said, and it was about how um, she was speaking to this piece and they were like, well, what is it about? And she was like, well, um, it's essentially a statement about where women have always uh, been told to be, which is between the sheets or on the shelf. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, really, really fun. Yeah, so um, I will be using some pretty radical language, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Cock and Cunt of uh, 1972 is a comedic play about housework um, by Judy Chicago that demonstrates the culturally assumed connection between biological differences and sex roles. So Chicago's violent and humorous play portrays one male and one female character. Uh, performed by two actresses wearing black leotards and exaggerated genitals. So originally a role-playing exercise that she uh, would have her female students partake in uh, initially at Fresno College and then later at, at CalArts. Um, this pivotal pedagogical exercise uh, required her students to take turns acting out the concepts of masculinity and femininity, uh, which was important because it required them to become comfortable with taking up space and, and uh, with accessing both those masculine and feminine um, qualities that were standardized as masculine and feminine qualities at the time. Um, so this reconfiguration of the battle of the sexes is a, is a critique of political and economic structure in which women existed as the collieries of men, so really only in relation to men, um, and it was a, a critique of that at the time. Yeah, so this next work here, uh, Waiting, uh, shows Faith Wilding, and she's um, typically, can you guys hear me? I keep doing this, oh, yeah. but I'll try. <laughs> um, so Faith Wilding uh, didn't actually write this piece by herself. Another thing I want to point out about Women House is that it was a very collaborative space. So almost every room, every performance was collaborative. There were probably one or two that were very... Uh, independently created, um, but otherwise, a, yeah, very collaborative space about community. Um, so yeah, Faith Wilding uh, rocks in her chair in a silent room in her performance of Waiting of 1972, reciting a series of bitter statements in a hushed monotone voice. Each of her utterances uh, rhythmically describe women's lives as reactive to the actions of others. So Wilding's voice physically and metaphorically uh, breaks the silence that's imposed upon her by uh, the environment and the social climate um, of the space that she lives in. Yeah. Um, and this next performance here is uh, Birth Trilogy. So Birth Trilogy was written by the Feminist Art Program Performance Group. Um, and it was a, a ritual of rebirth, symbolizing the new relationships of the women attending Women House. In this ceremony of birth, the community of women refer to ancient Western tradition through the dramatic sacred performances of uh, witches' covens. Um, and uh, the themes of rejuvenation and collective identity and birth tr trilogy enhanced the bitterness um, and sort of made it very clear that there was bitterness that motivated this resurgence of female agency. Um, yeah, so. 
Um, in conclusion, I, uh, Women House was a collective protest advocating uh, for women emancipation. It is in the breaking of silence and the refusal to be complacent that the artists at Women House successfully challenged the power dynamics of the patriarchy. So the cultural, economic, political, and personal consequences of gender roles determined solely by biological differences um, has had immense consequences for women in the past. Um, these consequences can be seen in the government mandating of female bodily autonomy and choice uh, that we are seeing today in the United States. So Women House made the private public through radicalized art that addressed a multitude of issues relating to women's oppression, Chicago's ridicule of socially standardized uh, sex roles, Wilding's refusal to be silenced, and the feminist art program performance group's overt assertion of collective female power acted as consciousness-raising protests that spotlighted and challenged the inequitable sociopolitical climate of the 1970s. The artists who produced Women House used parody and exaggeration as tools to undermine uh, the essentialist stereotypes about women that really limited them to these domestic roles, um, making it one of the earliest feminist artworks um, to contribute uh, and to question the boundaries between essential and constructed meaning. Uh, it is essential that artists continue to address these crises of their times to combat the risks of government sanctions. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Megan, so much. Well, now we're on to our fourth student talk of five, and this uh, talk is Raha Karamad, and she will be speaking, uh, speaking on a paper called Born of Christ.